Hello, welcome to my weekly show, My Top Tips. This is Silver Jubilee of this initiative, 25th episode. I'm encouraged to commit, to admit that this has become a sustained and a resilient activity. There will be two more in this year. And with that, score of 27, I hope to continue the same way in the new year also for you all. Every Wednesday, 9.30 a.m. IST. My top tips. And today, discussion will be about business continuity in pharmaceuticals industry. A quick look at the industry itself. It has some features which are unique to this industry. There are four types of companies in this industry. Innovator companies, generic companies, biologics companies, and formulation companies. Let's have a look at the life of a drug also. It is a costly business. Producing a drug estimated in producing one drug. Estimated cost investment is from $1 billion to $3 billion. Here's the life cycle of a drug. From idea generation to discovery and preclinical development to patenting, moving to lab tests, lower to higher and human-like animals, and then the clinical trials start. My apologies for type of trials. Phase one looks at safety of the drug. Phase two looks at efficacy of the drug. And phase three of clinical trials looks at geographical efficacy. After which, an approval is sought, taken, achieved from the regulators. And then manufacturing starts, moves to distribution, sales, and consumption. People like you and me. Continues with post-market surveillance. This is what the company will do. And then generic entry would start so far. The innovator company perhaps would have been working. If a, comp a drug is patented, the period is 20 years, and roughly it is estimated that 15 years may go before the manufacturing starts. So a company has only five years to get the returns, while there's 15 years of investment. Once the patent life is over, then generic companies can come into play and start producing, manufacturing the same drug. And then the end of life someday. Quick look at the structure of the pharma company. A typical pharma company will have R&D, clinical operations department, regulatory affairs, manufacturing and production, Quality is very important. This is one of the most regulated industries in the world. And obvious because there may be a question of life and death. Attempt is to saving lives, but an incorrect medication may result into that also. So it's highly regulated industry and a lot of focus on quality. Sales and marketing department would exist, medical affairs, market access and pricing, supply chain and logistics, very important department in a pharmaceutical company, HR to take care of the people, their own people. Finance, once again, to take care of the own people. IT or ICT, like any other company, even pharma companies are highly dependent on IT today. There has to be a legal and compliance department, employee health and safety, 
and public relations, which again we'll talk a little later, may need extra focus compared to other companies in the pharmaceutical companies. Rajendra, welcome. I started talking about the topic, which is business quantity in pharma companies. Quick look at top risks anticipated in or for a pharma company. Cybersecurity, like any other company, there is no exception here. Data breaches, supply chain in third party. And today we say third, fourth, fifth, sixth party. We need to go deep into our supply chain. The supply chain for a pharma company may be very long and complex as well. I spent a few extra seconds on this in a moment. Quality. Geopolitical exposures. Environment. Chemicals are used. A chance of explosion or leakage. Split, slippage, spillage, sorry, which may impact the environment. Competition, regulations, repeating, highly regulated, one of the most regulated industry in the world. IP is very important. Once again, it may be an information leakage or data leakage if a new drug is being produced. We discussed that it may take up to 15 minutes before 15 years sorry before a drug comes into market and in between if there is a leakage hr taking care of people becomes very important because for these 15 years if this person has been working had been working in the company 5 years of the first 15 years and then moves out decides to move out a lot goes with him or her which may be here. Hence, intellectual property is a big risk for pharma companies. R&D costs, like any cost, generally in the world have been going up, so that becomes a risk. At the same time, the expectation from the customers is to have the lower price on the medicine that I'm purchasing from the market, in the market. Data security, some of these may be linked together with IT risks or cyber risks, cyber security, data breaches, data security, or information leakage, data leakage. Aging population becomes a risk for the pharmaceutical companies. While that may be called an opportunity also that more people may be falling sick, may need more health care, and hence there is a need for doing more, producing more, or producing differently for the same existing disease or different drug. Specialized skills in this sector, very important. And the last one I am saying is today because of machine language and artificial intelligence, which may be part of, is part of IT, highly dependent on IT. We have always said that. AI brings its own challenges along with it. So while automation is link, being looked forward to, it is required to control the cost, for example, to increase the speed of coming out, which generally there is not much control. It takes one to 15 years and then only five years after patenting. The, 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 the payback period for a pharmaceutical companies generally just five years, after which when the patent period is over, any other company may start developing, manufacturing the same drug. So a quick look at the risks also. What we have attempted to do is to understand the pharmaceutical industry, the life of a drug, the structure of the company, various departments, and then top uh, risks anticipated in a pharmaceutical company. Let's spend some time on business quantity in pharma companies. I'm not spending time on the need. There are benefits of doing it. 
what I'm attempting to say is that business continuity is as important in pharma companies as for any other company. Business continuity is required. The good news is the same global standard ISO 22301, current version is 2019. The same standard can be used for in by pharmaceutical companies also. And the same cycle also, implementation cycle can be used there also. I'm again not spending time on that today because this session I've decided to keep about 15 minutes or so, not more than that. When I call it my top tips weekly show, today we have been talking about business quantity in pharmaceuticals companies or industry. So ISO 22301 can be used in pharma companies also, by pharma companies also. Even the implementation cycle doesn't need to be touched. So quickly, starting from policy formulation, business quantity policy, then BIA business impact analysis, RA risk assessment, going to strategies or solutions, moving on to plan stage, that's where the business quantity plan and other associated plans are created. Moving on to next step, which is validation, provides assurance, where we do reviews, maintenance, audits, testing, etc., and tests of different types. Someday I'll talk at length about tests also, which is very important step in the cycle. And we look at continual improvement. Everyone in a company plays role in business quantity, so there is no change for pharma companies either. So everyone needs to be trained as well. That's where we call embedding business quantity into organizations. Culture. Some unique features of a pharma company due to which implementing business quantity may have extra challenges for pharmaceutical companies. A plant is generally approved, a manufacturing plant of a pharma company where a drug is to be produced, is approved to manufacture a particular drug for a particular geography. We'll see the impact of this when we go to the next discussion, part of next part of discussions when we start discussing strategies. These companies have double dependencies on vendors and suppliers. When I say double dependencies, a pharma company needs some inputs. So those are coming from vendors and suppliers, but they also produce that product that needs to be distributed. So that needs to be sent. They need suppliers, vendors for those activities also. And that's a feature of all other manufacturing units also, all other manufacturing companies also, whichever sector they may belong to, whether IT producing some equipment, hardware, etc., or auto, for example. So they will have double dependency on vendors and suppliers. They need some inputs and they need to provide their output to the external world. Adding to this challenge in the pharma industry, some drugs may need storage and transportation at controlled temperatures. So this is how it becomes different from transporting, assuming a fertilizer. Or another piece of hardware, which may be nuts and bolts, for example. Now moving to the strategies, and we'll see there are some differences, some challenges with respect to the pharma company. So if you look at people missing, absent due to any reason, flood, fire, earthquake, pandemic, etc. Could be a long list, but people are missing. The strategies for any company would be to have backup resources, have cross-trained resources, plan succession, keep documented procedures and also outsourcing. There are five possibilities. If your people are missing, sick, hurt, dead. For a formal company, same strategies can work, except that some specialized skills resources may not be available easily while deciding to outsource. 
Outsourcing anyway is one of the last options. When your RTOs are very long, then only you will be able to think of outsourcing. But it may have some extra challenges. If your building is missing, workplace, the strategies for any company are to have alternate workplace, which may be hot, warm, or cold. I'm not going deep into these specifications. What is hot, warm, or cold? Also, if your building is missing, you could be working from home. Some challenges with respect to pharma. When it's building, which means a plant or manufacturing unit is missing, is down. Because that is approved to produce a particular drug. Having an alternate is generally not a viable option. It takes long and takes a lot of investment and then that approval. They cannot start manufacturing before approval. And having another one in advance. Plan A is producing one drug and plan B also is producing the same drug during DAU business as usual. Once again, is a costly affair, difficult to achieve. I don't, don't want to say impossible because nothing is impossible in this world, but it's a very costly affair. And the pharma company may like to do their cost benefit analysis for that. When it comes to working from home, support functions may be able to work from home like any other company, but the main output, which is drug, comes from the plant. That cannot happen at home. So that work from home is not a viable option for a manufacturing unit, any manufacturing unit. Today we are talking of specifically about the pharma companies. Third category is IT. If IT is missing, the plan, the strategy is to have alternate data center and other equipment. Again, in the categories of hot, warm or cold, same strategies can work, will work for pharma companies also. There is no difference. There is no extra challenge here. If your supplies are missing, you can stock or you can have multiple vendors for same supplies. And again, same strategies can work for pharma companies also, except that vendor development for pharma companies is a long, tedious and costly affair. Once again, given the vendors need to be approved by the regulator. If your information is missing, the strategy is to make duplicates as soon as the information is created. And making duplicates can be paper duplicates or magnetic duplicates and then making multiple copies and storing in multiple places, locations. The same strategies will work for pharma company also. If your utilities are missing, once again, the strategies for any company are to store utility, store water, store electricity, for example, and in different formats, different ways. To have multiple suppliers, to have electricity from different suppliers, and to have alternate sources. You could have your own generation wind power or solar power, for example. The same strategies can will work for pharma companies also. The last category I'm picking up is plant and equipment or plants and equipment for which strategies for any companies are to once again have alternate plant, have parts in stock up to an extent. You cannot, cannot have all parts and uh, even any part in a limited number also or have your equipment in stock. In principle, for pharma companies, same strategies can work except that having alternate plant for pharma companies is a costly affair with regulatory requirements and have specialized equipment in having specialized equipment in stock may not be practicable. So while closing today's my top tips for a pharma company business continuity, this is how I would close. A company will have to conduct its own cost benefit analysis of having alternates like plant and equipment for living or live with the risk. They will have to decide after conducting their cost benefit analysis. The risk of going down can further be downgraded by investing more in the risk management. Pharma companies spe specifically will attempt 
to have less risk, reduced likelihood of going down due to any reason. I say it this way in simple terms, compared to any other company, if an IT company, for example, BFSI, any other sector, I'm saying, is building a wall, which is two bricks thick, assume 12 inches thick. A pharma company may like to build two and a half or three bricks thick wall so that the chances of going down are reduced. They are redu investing more into, they are investing more into risk management itself. With an intent, likelihood of going down is reduced. The nature of industry demands a lot of focus on public relations also, and pharma companies may like to spend more on building their reputation and brand. Additional point is that business quantity, like any other industry for pharma industry also, is not either or. It is and, and, and. So there may be other associated management systems, programs, running in the company like risk management, crisis management, IT disaster, recovery, information security, cyber security, etc. Shall we have these or BCM? Is not the question. It's not any choice at all. It is and, and, and. These are complementary to each other. Overall, it is organizational resilience that they all support and that needs to be done in any company in any industry and in the pharmaceutical company also they will also have to look at their supply chains more critically and go down to fourth fifth sixth parties from the third party so once again more investment in tprm which is third party risk management is envisaged by a pharma company with this i would like to stop here 25th episode of my weekly show, my top tips. If you have any questions, please feel free to write to me about this session or about resilience as a whole. My promise, I'll continue to bring these to you every week. Wednesdays, 9.30 a.m. IST. Rajendra, I'll stop here. If you have any questions, please unmute yourself and I'm happy to take any question now. Or you can yeah. write. Yes, please. Thank, thank you so much, Daman. So I had one yes, question. Also, it... Yeah, uh, Daman, are you able to hear me? Yes, yes. Okay, wonderful. So I had one question related to the geopolitical risks that you had mentioned. This is mm -hmm. quite an important point considering, you know, uh, the things which are happening outside the world, like the Russia-Ukraine conflict, the Israel-Palestine. So Israel is one of the, you know, biggest for when it comes to the pharmaceutical manufacturing medicine as good as india and some other potential risks geopolitical issues may happen like china taiwan and you never know <laughs> right so so in this for this for uh, for from perspective of geopolitical risk uh, how will it exactly affect pharma apart from you know just a supply or anything else because we never know which come uh, country we are much dependent on for the you know the medicine productions and etc. Exactly. So there may be two types, I guess, uh, Jinder. One is if I'm getting my supplies from that company, country, sorry, my supplies may be impacted. And second is if that is my consumer base also, they may not be able to get my supplies or I may not be able to provide those supplies. So that impacts my revenues immediately once again so two types i'll say in short possibilities mm -hmm. well i also guess when it comes to medicines because it's life-saving we are talking about even the geopolitical scenario i'm assuming or that's my wish i will say that the countries may like to continue with supplies as well as incoming product medicines or drugs for people but we do not mm -hmm. know we cannot fully anticipate what happens at that time, depending Correct. on the level of that conflict, whether it remains within two countries or whether it becomes international, whether United Nations and WHO come into picture. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Geopolitical 
the risk would be managed at those levels also, perhaps. When yeah. you and WHO also may have to come into picture. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So thank you so much, Daman. And I uh, looking forward to the next sessions. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much, Rajendra. Thanks. Okay. Bye-bye. With that, I'll close. Thanks once again. Weekly show, my top tips every Wednesday, 9.30 a.m. IST. I look forward to seeing you next Wednesday also. Take care. Bye-bye. Have a great day.